Thanks for being with us on Friday Night Blitz. I'm Brandon Kinnard. It's a newer rivalry, but it has turned into a fun one. Luxembourg Casco and Little Shoot. They first played in 2015 after the Northeastern Conference was formed. And six years later, they've already got a trophy to battle for. We'll take a look at it here. Right between our guys, John Mino and Ted Stefaniak on the Sports Showdown crew. The LC Trophy. The winner gets that, and the Spartans get right to work. Isaac Vandenbush, nine-yard touchdown run, dodging tacklers all the way to the end zone. 7-0 Luxembourg Casco. First play of the second quarter, Ryan Ruthio on the end around, takes it all the way to the far side pylon, and that is another Luxembourg Casco touchdown. 14-0 the score. After another Spartan score, Little Shoot looking to make something happen. Cade Van Aston's pass, tipped and picked off by Ryan Ruthio, who had a heck of a night and a nice return here, too, to set him up in good field position. Ensuing possession through the air. Owen Depry to Evan Dorner, stretching for the pylon, and he scores. 28-0, Luxembourg Casco at half, and they cruise to a 42-7 win, retaining the LC Trophy. Chancellor Johnson standing by with the victors. Coach, five teams up, five teams down. What's impressed you the most about your team's fantastic start to the season? Well, I'm happy for how they have handled adversity and, and, and just doing things uh, the right way. Um, I believe in these kids. I love them. And uh, there's a lot of things that we did tonight that we definitely got to fix if we want to get to the next level. But um, I'm very proud of their grit. They believe in each other. I believe in them. And there's no other place I'd rather be with these guys right here. Yes, sir. I'm going to bring one of your players in right now. Obviously, you guys are undefeated on this season. How much fun are you having with your brothers this year? Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, it's, we all work really hard. We all try our hardest in practice, and it feels really good. After a win like this, for anybody that still says Little Shoot is still the real LC, what's your message to them? Uh, <laughs> uh, we beat them the past two years, and uh, I think we played harder tonight, and we wanted it more. Well, uh, sir, I think this one is yours. I think you guys yeah. take on the real LC. I was worried Chance is going to take that thing home with them for a little bit, but congrats to the Spartans on the win. Well, another big game here, De Pere and Bayport. We'll pick it up early on in the game. Where is he? There he is, Gabe Herman on the QB keeper. Had everyone fooled, 46 yards, 6-0 Redbirds. Late first quarter, Bayport responds with a QB keeper of their own. Cole Bedson, if you watched last week, you know how fast he is. Showing it off again here. Extra point good after that, so the Pirates take a 7-6 lead. Here comes DePierre. Herman to his tight end, Noah Gahan. Redbirds up 12-7, third quarter now. Bayport scoring again. It's A.J. Kuscherchain rushing it in. They take back the lead, 15-12. We only got the tail end of that one, but that's a go-ahead score for DePierre with less than a minute to go as Herman Finds his receiver, Jack May. 19-15 to peer on top. 18 seconds left now. This would win the game. Benson throwing it downfield to his man, Cooper O'Connell, but he gets pushed out at the one. An incredible finish there. De Pere barely holds on to win it by four. Here's Rachel Hopmeyer. For the first time since 2015 and third time under head coach Chad Michael Wicks, the Redbirds have beat the Pirates in an FRCC game. After scoring first and on one of two turnovers, the icing on the cake for DePierre was a late game 25-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Gabe Herman, who called this the craziest ending to any game in his career. Yeah, I want to say it's just another game, but it's really not. It's, it's Bayport. Um, like I said a couple days ago, with you, uh, they've been running the conference for a while now, and it's glad to get this one on their home, on their home turf. I was keeping an eye on the clock. I knew what our timeout situation was. I didn't want to give them time to do what they did. You know, there's not much you can do. You take the touchdown when you can get it. But we were setting up that corner route to Jack May all night. And, and he, big time players make big time plays. Game, Gabe puts it on a rope. Jack May, one of the best receivers in the FRCC, gets it done. After week five, both DePierre and Bayport move to four and one this season. In Green Bay, Rachel Hopmeyer, NBC 26 Sports. And DePier takes over first place in the FRCC North. One of the other contenders, Pulaski here on the road at Eshwabadan tonight. This is Pulaski football right here. Short touchdown run from Aiden McDougal. 7-0 Red Raiders early second quarter. On their next drive. Doesn't go as well this time. Fumbled exchange. Scott Caven recovers for the Jaguars. Eshwabadan, though, does not turn that into points. 
Pulaski finally breaks free for a big run late second quarter. Aaron Marashek around the edge, 40-yard gain here, down to the 20, and a few plays later, Marashek will do the honors himself. Six-yard touchdown run. Pulaski cruises to a 56-7 win. Red Raiders and the Red Birds uh, on top of the FRCC North. This is an FRCC crossover here, West Pier of the North, Menasha of the South. Devontre Smith, late third quarter with a short touchdown run that ties it up at 21. Into the fourth now, same end zone, same result. It's Najee Mitchell putting West Pier back on top, 28-21. Ensuing Menasha drive, these are the plays that decided the game here. Smith bouncing it outside. He takes it all the way inside the 10-yard line, but the West Appear defense comes up with a huge stop. On fourth down, Shane Kempin making the play of the game, stopping Smith and getting the ball back to his offense where Mitchell absolutely dominated on the next drive at a 30-plus yard run and then another touchdown here to put this one out of reach. The Phantoms exploding for 28 points in the fourth to win it by 28. Heck of a finish for them. Down to the Valley, we've got Appleton North and Nina. The Lightning coming off a tough loss to Kimberly in our game of the week last week, but they were rolling against the Rockets tonight. An assortment of plays from their opening drive here, a short run off the right side, then they get it to the big man, Cal Martini. Usually in the backfield, let him split out as a wide receiver this time, and 44 takes it all the way down to the 30-yard line. Lightning. Just keep on moving the football. This is kind of in, indicative of their night. Little chunk plays, and then finally they'll cash it off with a touchdown here from Martini. Shaken, not stirred. A big win for the Lightning, 42-7 over Nina. To the Packerland Conference now. Okano on the road at Kiwani. Pick it up on the opening drive of the game. Blue Devils getting a big stop on defense. Fourth and goal. Another fourth and goal stop, just like that West Pier game. No points for Kiwani, but the Storm on their next drive, they'll punch it in this time. Jesse Morales Hernandez powering his way through. 7 0 Kiwani into the second quarter. Blue Devils D getting it done again. This time a pick six from Riley Anderson. All the way to the house. That ties things up at seven. Then right before the half, though, Kiwani adds another score. Short touchdown run from Kyle Karnoff. The Storm get the win here, 21-7, the final score. We'll shift 